And here we are again. Hi, Tricia. How are you doing today? Hello. I'm Looking just fine. good. Thank you. Thank you for being with us in our dining room again. I guess we're not going to get back out on our deck until the Lord send us some good sunshine. So be praying, saints, that it warms up here. Uh, we're teaching from Tabernacle Book. We're on the lampstand. We're going to finish it up today. Uh, I'm going to look through here and see if there's anything I've missed. Okay. Uh, anyway, yesterday was exciting. What did we learn yesterday about this, how many etchings there were uh, or how many uh, different pieces of bowls and buds and flowers there were. Oh, I am being tested right now, right? Well, it was six, 66. 66 yes. Okay, you got that right. You counted <laughs> them yesterday. Yes. And 66 what? 66 books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. We live uh, uh, not too far from Route 66. Mm -hmm. You've heard of Route 66? I think this is the ultimate Route 66. It starts in Genesis and takes a route that leads you all the way to the book of Revelation. Hey, something interesting here about, about the lampstand. You know, uh, science or, uh, you know, uh, not scientists, I guess, well, people that know these things claim that this isn't even possible to have uh, this lampstand because the tensile strength of gold, gold is so heavy that if it was reached out like that, that it would just sag under its own weight and, and, and probably not even hold its position. Or at least that's what I've heard. Well, fact is, this is pure gold. We have historical evidence of it. I mean, there was the uh, menorah in the temple that was made of solid gold. And, uh, you know, but, but they say that can't possibly be hap could happen, that it could even stand. The weight of it would cause it to drop. Well, that's what the devil's been saying about the church, because this is a picture of the church, that there's no way that the church could stand. There's no way after all of these millenniums or hundreds of years since Christ, uh, the church should be out of commission by now. But it's not. It's still standing with its hands raised up, holding forth the word of God full of the oil of the Spirit. You know what? For those of you that uh, are scientifically minded and are smarter than the Bible and smarter than God and say that this couldn't even be possible and uh, the church is going into extinction and the church isn't going to survive and we're going to extinguish the light of the world, Jesus is going to be put out. Oh, no, you're, you're mistaken on that one. Why? Because underneath these branches are invisible hands that hold them up and keep them from falling. You know, back in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy, it's, uh, I think it's chapter 32, verse 27, underneath are the everlasting arms, and there is an unseen hand that holds and supports the church of Jesus Christ. Tricia and I are personal witnesses that God is faithful when it looks like, and science, and materialism, and the bank, and the doctor, and everybody says it's going Gonna, it's going to fall. It's going to drop. No, we're still doing okay. Why is that? Because the hands of an unseen benevolent God hold us up in perfect position. Praise God. Amen. That's a beautiful thought. And uh, another thing we looked at, let's just kind of recap a little bit. Notice that uh, the proximity of the lamps to the uh, center shaft. In other words, you can get as close to Jesus as you want. James 4 and verse 8 says, draw near unto me and I will draw near unto you. Praise God. But another thing here, they get farther, farther and farther. It's a picture of the outreach of the church. And that is what? In Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and then into the uttermost part of the earth. Praise God. Notice the lamps will the oil sit upon or on top the branch. That is because the Spirit of the Lord rests upon us, just like the dove rested upon Jesus, just like the flames of fire sat on top of the heads of each of the disciples in the upper room. So God pours his Spirit down from above. You know, there's not, there's not an underneath reservoir that sucks up oil up into the lamps. The priest every morning came and poured fresh oil in from above. And that's speaking of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit from heaven down upon us. And the fact that it happened each day is a symbolism that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day of our life. Ephesians 5 and 18 says, be not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, the Greek there implies being filled, continue to be filled. In other words, every day the oil needs replaced. Plus, 
the wick. Did your mom have a kerosene lamp or your grandma? Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes if the wick got uh, out of the right proportion, right. if it was too long, then it would burn real bright. Mm -hmm. If it got too low, it'd begin to smolder and yes. fill up the room with yucky black smoke. Yes. Well, that's also a picture of our relationship with the Holy Spirit. We, we need to just be in order. We need to be positioned right with God. Uh, and so that our light will burn. There's too many Christians that are smelly, smoldering Christians. There are others that are overly bright and get too much glory to their own selves. But uh, when you're in the right position with God and have the right amount of oil and it's fresh oil, then praise God, you're going to shine beautifully as a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. So those are beautiful thoughts. I gave you the last verse of Exodus chapter 25. Mm -hmm. Uh now, now let me let me sh look just a couple of things here. Okay. It talks about the wick tremors. Mm -hmm. Read verse thirty. Read verse thirty-seven. I'll just comment a little bit, and we'll close today. Okay. You shall make seven lamps for it, and they shall arrange its lamps so that they give light in front. Okay, of it. that's something I wanted you to see. Mm -hmm. The way that the lamps are arranged is so that they shine because there's a backdrop of gold wood behind this, so that throws the light in the direction in front of it. Mm -hmm. Well, what's in front of it? The table of showbread. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of the lamp is to shine on the table. In other words, the reason God gives us his anointing, fills us with the oil of his Holy Spirit, and lights us and illuminates us with the 66 books of the Bible is for one reason. It's not to draw attraction to the lampstand, no. It's to shine light on the table. Everything we do as Christians is to shine light on Jesus Christ, yeah. the bread of life, the yeah. table of showbread. Hallelujah. Yes. And uh, so it shines in front of it. Read the next verse. And its wick trimmers and their trays shall be of pure gold. It okay, who is a wick trimmer? Who, uh, If there was a ministry in the church that is a wick trimmer, <laughs> that's what evangelists do. That's what revivalists do. Your pastor ought to be a wick trimmer. You know, when we come to get, you know, every morning when the priest come through, he not only poured in oil, but he trimmed the wick. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's what preaching is all about. It's to trim us. It's to get us in right relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So I'm not only an evangelist, I'm a wick trimmer. You're a wick trimmer. I Did you know, know that? that? Yeah, <laughs> Reverend Wick Trimmer. Go ahead. It shall be made of a talent of pure gold. Now that's another thing. This is made out of what? Just read that again. It shall be made of a talent of pure gold. It's made of a talent. Now a talent is a hundred pound or so weight of a... Uh, uh, of gold or whatever that weight measure is, but think of the word talent. The lampstand is made out of a talent. You know, God not only gives us fruit of the Spirit and gifts of the Spirit, but our light and our witness comes from a word that you're very familiar with, and that's a talent. And uh, some people have lots of talent, some people have a little talent, uh, but God sees every one of us as equals, no matter how great our talent, how small our talent. Uh, this witness is created for talent, through right. talent, and in talent. Praise God. Right. And then verse 40. And see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. Okay, this is the last verse of chapter 25. We had already shared the other day that our theme for this series is if the pattern is right, the power will fall. Mm -hmm. And we read from verse 8 and 9 that you're to do it according to the pattern. Now we get to the end of this 25th chapter and he reminds them, after the revelation of the lampstand, make sure that you build it according to the pattern that was showed you in the mount. In other words, you don't just design your own church. No. There's a lot of pastors, you know, well, our church is going to be a seeker-sensitive church, or our church is going to be a worship church, or our church is going to be a youth church, or our church is going to be a traditional church, or it's going to be a... No, no. You don't decide what the lampstand's going to be. You use the talent God's given you. You get filled with the word of God and you get full of the oil of the Holy Spirit and you do it according to God's pattern. That means nine fruit of the Spirit. That means nine gifts of the Spirit. That means 66 books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that means standing on a foundation Amen. of the rock of ages. Praise Amen. God. Amen. And that closes the 25th chapter. And now we're going to move on to uh, the... Uh, golden altar on tomorrow's program.
And we're not even to the veil of the Holy of Holies yet. So we've still got another week of teaching. And I hope you've been enjoying this. Please like, share, and get it out to some friends because this is good material. Yes, Praise it God. Yes, it is. I'm learning a Any lot. Any ideas or anything to say? Anything to say? Well, um, I'm looking forward to getting through this and uh, hopefully passing that final exam. What's the neatest thing that you've learned about? Yeah. Uh, well, you love the 66 revelations in the lamps. In the yeah, lamp I did. Stand. I thought that was just really cool that there's 66 books of the Bible and that that was incorporated into the lampstand. I think that is. But did you thing. notice that the farther we're getting into the inner court, mm -hmm. the more exciting stuff's yeah. getting? Yeah, it is. Yes. As, <laughs> as it's revealed a little at a time, at first it can be overwhelming because you wonder why is it that this is only so many feet high and why is it, you know, you think, what does that matter? And then you get in there and you learn a little bit more and then you learn a little bit more. And now this revelation today, the 66 books in the Bible is like, oh my goodness, that's before they were written. I mean, we all know God has a plan for our life, but you know, it is already written in heaven. He's already got that plan for you. You just have to look to him because it's there. Um, they didn't know what they were looking at then. But I just, that's just a great but, but what But what I was getting at is that the farther, the deeper we get into this, right. the more exciting it gets. Yeah. Well, <laughs> people that are just surface Christians hanging out in the outer court, yeah. hanging by the gate, yeah. you know, halfway in the world, halfway out, they yeah. don't see what's so exciting about this that's faith. True. You've got to step that's into true. the inner court. You've got to move deeper into the Word of God. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, things start to click and lights come on and oil, we get filled and... Pretty soon it becomes really exciting yeah. to be a child of God and to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us. We'll be here the same time tomorrow. Or, of course, you can watch these pre-recorded videos anytime you want. Yes. But thanks for being with us. You have a great day.